to Friday Nights with Emma. Hope everybody's okay. What happened to the weather today? And yesterday. It just totally turned. We had such a lovely autumn weather. Oh, Link's trying to say hi. There's Link. Link's going to be joining us tonight. And then it got really cold. So we'll see. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Cheers. g and today. Joanne is watching. Oh, hi, Joanne. And her mum, Maureen. Hello, mum, Maureen. Sorry, I had to get a sip in. Hope everybody's good. Hope everybody's good. Sarah is watching. Hello, Sarah. Tina is watching. Oh, hi, Tina. I'm just going to continue sewing while I'm while everybody joins and says hi. Because I'm, I'm just getting the sleeve hemmed. You might want to move your glass. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I think all these glasses are so big. They're a bit dangerous for me. Diane is watching. Hi, Diane. Joanne says, thank you for the pressing mat and bits you sent. So lovely. Ooh. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for your order. Appreciate it. Yeah, so it's just me and Mikey tonight. Mikey's Sharon on camera. Sharon is watching. Oh, hi, Sharon. Joan is watching. Hi, Joan. Diane is watching. Hi, Diane. Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Belinda. Hi, Belinda. Annette. Hi, Annette. Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Your mum. Hello, mum. Caroline. Hi, Caroline. Joan. Hi, Joan. Don't worry, you're not missing too much here. I'm literally just heading Kaylee. to the edge. Oh, hello, Kaylee. Hi, Kohebu. Christine. Hi, Christine. Cheryl. Hi, Sharon. Jane. Hi, Jane. Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Your mum likes the shirt. Oh, yes, thank you. New, well, yeah, it is new. Diamond. Hi, Shirley. June. Hi, June. Right, what I'm going to show you tonight, which I'm just finishing up this bit here, is I have quilted most of, oh, where is it, it's behind me, most of this, I've still got a little bit to do, but I've done the, done the edges at least, I have to finish up the middle, so, you can help me link, it's been it's thoroughly montified, meaning it's got a nice patina of fluffy cat hair all over it, black seems to be, I don't know, it just seems to be a magnet for that. So it'll have to be defluffed at some point. But I've still got some bits I need to finish. All the edges done. So what I'm going to do, as soon as I finish hemming this, is I'm going to show how to trim it, if Link moves. And then I will show attaching the binding and attaching the sleeve on the top at the same time. Lorraine says, evening with grape wine from Kent. Ooh, nice. Carol and Hi, Lorraine Carol. with two R's is watching. Hi, Lorraine, with two R's. I've got a little bit left to do. Yeah, sorry. We just put Sand it on fast. So. Sandy is watching. Oh, hi, Sandy. Christina. Hi, Christine. No. Sorry, who? Christine, no. Oh, Christina, sorry. Hi, Christina. Right, I'm just going to zip. Link's not a fan of that. Leslie is watching. Oh, hi, Leslie. Valerie is watching. Oh, hi, Valerie. Right, I'm just doing a single fold on this bottom part of the, of the sleeve. Heather is watching. Hi, Heather. I'll show you. It's not the best because it's black. But let me finish the edge and I'll show you. Link found something to play with. I know this sleeve is going to be a little bit longer than I need, so I'm just going to go to the edge. I will push it down. Debbie and Gail are watching. Oh, hi, Debbie. Hi, Gail. Right, I'll show you what I've done here. So I've just taken a strip, which was width of fabric, because I know that's going to be long enough for the top of my quilt, the back of my quilt. And on the edge, the short edge, I've doubled that over twice and then hemmed it. So there's no raw edges showing here at all. 
Um, the reason, <coughs> sorry, the reason I do this bit twice is because you're going to be pushing poles and things down this way. And I just like to have that nice and secure so there's no raw edges. This one, I just was lazy. And sometimes I double edge it, sometimes, this time I've just single edged it because that raw edge is going to be on the inside of your sleeve anyway. So it's not going to be a problem. And then I will hand tack that down as well. So you're not going to see that raw edge and it's not going to interfere with anything. Barbara is watching. Oh, hi, Barbara. Sorry, Sheila is watching. Hi, Terry Sheila. is watching. Amanda is watching. Hi, Terry. Hi, Amanda. And Lorraine says she loves this on a Friday night. Oh, Weeks yeah. are flying by. Yeah, I know. I know. I can't believe it's going to be October. Up dropped. Oh, yeah. So, in clear space. I'm going to show you how I trim. Kaylee wants to know what flavor. King Junior. Oh, it's a new one actually. It's a citrus. It's a citrus one. So it's nice, 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 nice. Something different. Oh, but I do have some slows, picked slows this week. So there will be some slow gin made this weekend. Well, started. Not be finished yet. But I do have some plum gin, which I was thinking about breaking out, but I started earlier in the year, which is really nice. Right. So you can do it how you prefer, <clears throat> but you can see my, maybe you can see my edging. I left this purposely a little bit big. So my border on the bottom is a little bit narrower than the one on the top. Now I, I really do want that to be all even. So what I do when I'm trimming, and actually I'll start in a corner, because that's what I tend to do. So I've got my square and I'm just lining up a line along the inside border so that it's nice and even. So I'm going to do it at maybe a little bit short, but it's two and a half and two and a half, which is relatively even and square. Kate is watching. Mm, hi Kate. Hi Kate. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to go. Valerie says your gin won't get spilled this week. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. God, I forgot that happened last week. Yeah, Josephine, hopefully not. Josephine is watching. Oh, hi, Josephine. And Lorraine says, wow, well, big glass, my kind of thing. Yes, yeah, so you can actually get two full tonics. So you can have two gin and tonics, basically, in one glass. And you can just say, well, I've only had one glass. Yeah. Beverly is watching. Hi, Beverly. There. So I think I've lined that up about as well as I can. Got my mat underneath. I'm just going to cut through everything all at once. Right. Pray that doesn't move. Sue is watching. Oh, hi, Sue. Just clean this so I can get. There we go. That's a nice, neat corner. Now you'll see, you can see my background over it. But I'm not worried about that because my binding is going to go over that and hide it anyway. And there's enough. I usually do my binding a half of an inch um, seam allowance. So there'll be plenty there um, to cover it. Watch out, my love. So I've done that. Now I'm just going to continue with my <laughs> my poor ruler. So I'm doing two and three quarters. Now I can't measure it along here because it dips into the border. So I'm going to measure two and three quarters along there. Actually, if I do it there, it'll bridge. There we go. Susan is watching. Hi, Susan. Hillary is watching. Oh, hi, Hillary. There we go. Leave it like that because I'm going to want my corner to go in the corner. If I was doing a bigger quilt, which I did earlier, I'd just use my long ruler 
up until I get about sort of 12 inches or so from the corner and then I use my corner square to my square 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 ruler and I get the rides out right to make sure my corners are all lined up so that's two and three quarters two and three quarters perfect that gives you nice square corners on your quilt Oop. oh that'd be all right i've just seen that a thread that i don't think i want to cut over but it's long enough so it's all right there we go now on this one what i'm actually going to do is get around Quarters, two and three quarters. Quilt isn't entirely square, so okay, let's put the difference. So I've trimmed it six inches into the corner. And this way I'm going to go as far as I can, if I can get it to purchase. There we go. Now the reason I did six inches here is because I need to bridge a little bit of a gap between that one and that one, that cut and that cut, just to even it out a little bit. Beverly, yes. How did you fix quilt the swirls? Fix quilt the swirls. Fix hyphen quilt the swirls. I don't know. Sorry. You might have to rem either remind me <laughs> or elaborate and or both. Please. Oh, the swirls on here, maybe. Yes. I okay, okay. So I haven't done all of them, but I have done this one. And what I've done is a blanket stitch around all of the edging. And I've quilted it all the way through. So you can see, I have to pick some. Stuff. It is on the machine. Yeah. Joyce is watching. Oh, okay. Hey, Joyce. So that's that swirl right there. So it's just a case of, because I use my walking foot, I just stitch a little bit and pivot. Now it's not the neatest, and I'm fine with that. Oh, Link needs to go into the back Montini's. of the kitchen. Montini's. It's Monty. Because I don't mind the way it looks, actually. It, I know it's not perfect. And some of my stitching is uneven, if you look. But I quite like, for this pattern in particular, I quite like the homespun, sort of folksy, not quite perfect look anyway. So I think it works well on this. Well, Monty really did a number on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can see the, the sheen of Monty hair everywhere. Yeah, that's how I did that. Joyce is watching. Hi Joyce. Ruler, ruler, ruler. Uh, Kaylee asks, was the decoration on the machine placed on top or cut through? So is this is this oh. did you cut the black out and leave the backing or is yes. that actually a piece? No, so that's a bit that I cut out. Um, it's on the, the Hawaiian quilt pattern. So some of it you literally just cut out. So the E, I actually made that different because my machine has gone the wrong way because of the way I made it. It should be an S, but I made that into an E. Um, the spool was 
uh, free floating so I um, bond web that on and then I've sewn around it as well as here I've also got to finish I've got to do a thread and some pins on the pin cushion so it's it's not entirely finished but I wanted to use it for demonstrating adding the sleeve Diana says Monty hair is a protective covering yeah well, we're well protected then. <laughs> And Beverly was thinking of doing a chain stitch by hand Ooh, in gold. That, oh, oh, yes. That would be stunning. That would be stunning. Definitely. Annette says you need sellotape wrapped around your hand to remove that monthly flood. Yes. <laughs> um, need more than that. Well, I actually um, shampooed the carpet in the living room today. And... It was surprising, even after I'd hoovered, how much Monty hair still came up. You can actually, I think the carpet is actually a slightly different colour from the Monty hair, not because of how dirty it was. It, we can actually see the pattern now, it's not just pale. <laughs> So I'd say squaring up is a bit, a bit precision, part precision, part art. Barbara says evening, evening all. Oh, hi, hi Barbara. Just going to do this last bit. It's feeling a lot lighter now that I've trimmed all the excess off. Actually, Barbara, when she did hers, she... Um, blanket stitched by hand all the way around. It was, it's stunning. Stunning. So, yeah. That's that bit. So that is all trimmed up. Ready to be. And Sunday says she has two long haired white cats and one long haired ginger cat. Oh. So they'll have the same problem. Yes. Uh, Deborah says her ruler slides on the fabric. I have tried sticking true grips on, but mm -hmm. that has not helped. Can you recommend what to try what next? To try. Um, I actually really like, I mean, this is an Omni grid, but I actually really like the um, Creative Grids rulers because they have the non slip part built into it. It's actually part of the plastic. And yeah, I have one uh, when I cut the fabric for the shop. That's what I use. I just don't seem to manage to bring one home. Uh, I've got a little bit of grippy on here, but I do find this still slippy. So that is the best thing I found. And I never used them until I um, went to the sewing quarter. And then I started using them and they're oh, sold on them, definitely. So the Creative Grids rulers, they're already built in. Those are really nice. The only thing I would say about them that be careful, and it's the same with my square ruler, is this Omni grid is in even numbers. So it's six inches across all the way. So every big line is an inch. So I don't really use the numbers very much. I just look at the lines and count the number of lines quickly. But with the Creative Grids ones, it's a bit more like this one where I've got a half of an inch on one side so you do have to be very careful because one side it measures um, like being like four and a half five and a half six and a half and the other side is even numbers so you do have to be careful when you're using it especially if you're left-handed and you do it the opposite way 
um, make sure you look at your numbers really carefully because it can trip you up. Beverly suggests putting a couple of sprays of 505 on the back. Oh, um, yes. I would try it out first. So that, that would work, but give it a try. Spray it lightly. Give it a try on some uh, fabric you're not particularly concerned about and see how you get on with it. If, you, if you're not keen, then I would wash it off. Um, Margaret is watching. Oh, hi, Margaret. Diana says, Odif has spray grippy. And Amanda says, popping a weight or a can on the far end of the ruler can help too, yeah. Yeah. in her experience. I've also seen um, grips on them, a little bit like a shower grip. So a little bit like when that you suctions to the wall uh, in a shower. So you've got a handhold. I've seen those being used on rulers as well. So you just suction it on. It's just a big, big handle, really. So you've got a little bit more purchase. Joanne says she loves her creative grids. Uh, they aren't cheap, but really good investment. And yeah. she feels safe using them. Beverly seconds the creative grid. And Diamond says, perfect sewing is for competitions, they say. I certainly don't think any of mine would be allowed in the hall at the festival. Oh, no. They definitely would. And Margaret is says, good evening from a wet Suffolk. Oh, hi, Margaret. And Christine says she uses sandpaper dots. Yes, that's what I've got on, on the back of my Monty's beam. I think these are probably ones I got free in one of the magazines. And they're coming off a little bit. It, it does help a little bit, but yeah, you have to be careful. Let's see. Make sure I've got that right. I'm just sewing my binding strips together. And um, Carol says, and I don't think I'm going to pronounce this right, O-D-I-F-D-O. A 404 ruler grip adhesive. It worked. Oh. It worked well on one of my rulers, oh, okay. which didn't have any grips. Good tip. Good tip. Thank you. So that must be a brand name. Is that a brand name? Yeah. My day, we didn't have rulers. <laughs> <laughs> we just use string. Uh, Diana says the Odif Grippy is in a pink tin. Oh, okay. And Lorraine is watching. Oh, hi, Lorraine. Mm -hmm. Diamond says, basically, if you have a long ruler, you need arms like Arnie. Yeah. That too. Just trimming off my extra for my bias binding. Well, this isn't bias binding, it's straight binding. Sorry. And Kaylee says she's counted the spines on the stegosaurus. Is that it? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means either. What does that mean, Kaylee? Where is Monty? Okay, that's my binding. Just get a John. Kaylee says, instead of rulers, you counted the spines. Oh, I see. Yes, because I said I... Oh, well done. Well uh, done. Uh, we got there in the end. Yep. Well, we're old. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So I'm just going to lay my binding out so that I don't have any joins on any corners. <laughs> Oh, I feel better. I should have caught on to that one. That was a good joke. <laughs> Katie's pretty good at dad jokes. Okay. So that 
to work. Ah, oh, the pins. Mm -hmm. That not pinner. Makes a rare appearance. I'm just going to roughly <clears throat> pin it in place so that I know where. Normally I would start at the bottom and go the way around, but. Uh, oh, I could do that. I could still do that. Barbara says the leg on your sewing table needs pulling out. Thank you. There we go. Okay. Oh, that one. Oh, that one helped. Thank you. I've been using <laughs> like that all week. <laughs> <laughs> Lori is watching. You alright, buddy? What's occurring? There. That's going to be my blinding. Anne is watching. Oh, hi, Anne. Now I want my sleeve to go along the back here. And I'm going to sew it in when I sew my binding on. So it's about like that. I'm going to leave about an inch from the edge. Joanne asks, how's Monty doing? Oh. Uh, he's, he's doing better. He's... I think he's happy with himself. Um, we are struggling to get some of the medication that he needs because um, he, he he won't cooperate. Um, but all things considered, he's I think he's doing well. We'll have to take him back in about two weeks to get another checkup. Yeah. But he's, um, yes, after his first stint, and the vet, actually, that first night he was gone, we got a call 20 past 10 that Friday night after the live stream saying that um, his condition had changed. So that was a bit of a, a, bit of a panic. But he's, he's on an even keel. He has lost a bit of weight. Um, but... He's been through a lot these last two weeks. Yeah, basically he's got a he's got a dicky heart. Poor guy, he's thirteen now. So we need him need him to be with us for a little bit longer. At least for my fiftieth and longer. Monty, would you stop chewing the plastic? That doesn't help either. So I've measured it and just cut it off. Oh, Fiona is watching. Oh, hi Fiona. So this is a, a kind of a bigger sleeve than I would normally do. I've cut a six inch wide strip, selvage to selvage, to make it. Um, partly because if you do ever put any into any exhibitions, they do generally want you to have a sleeve that is about three to four inches wide, at least, because they put quite wide uh, batons of wood through it to hang them up. So if you've already got that done when you when you do it, then you don't have to worry about it later on. Not that this one's going into any exhibition. Kaylee says fall update on Animal Crossing. You can grow pumpkins now. Ooh. And she likes your sweater. Oh, thank you. Very odd to me. Thank you. Yeah, it's to replace a, a um well, it's to replace a, my other mustard cardigan. For two reasons. One, it was too bobbly, so it probably did need to be retired. And the other reason is because the dog shoot a hole in it. No, would shoot a hole in it. Yeah. 
just pinning it in place with the, the raw edge aligned with the edge of my quilt along the back. Now I like to have it fairly close, the edges fairly close to the edge. Especially on a big quilt because otherwise the corners kind of fall down. There we go, just like that. Leave this loose, because I would uh, hand stitch that down anyway, but I'm leaving it, gonna be leaving it loose anyway, because I want to finish uh, quilting. But even normally when I'm doing it, I usually leave it like that, and then I hand finish, hand tack that down, just like I would for the binding. So, let's see where we are. Probably because you're not used to thinning. Mm -hmm. oh. No, Monty. Yeah, he wants his food. It's important that he gets his food. He doesn't like doors closed. I don't understand. He doesn't like doors closed. This is his house, remember? We just inhabit it. So I'm just redoing it because I need to start from this edge. Dinah says she loves the pink stabbies. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. You know what, what stabbies are, don't you? No. <laughs> the pins. Last week, Haley was calling them stabbies. Was she? Yeah. I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she is Viking. <laughs> Stabbies. <laughs> what was she doing playing with the pins? She wasn't playing with the pins. Oh. She was wanted to. And she called them Stabbies. <laughs> Lengths to about three, it just makes it go a little bit easier. And um, I've got my walking foot on, and I'm just going to line up. <laughs> uh, Diamond says Monty should come live with her. <laughs> My husband is a locksmith, but wouldn't know how to close the door behind him in this house to save himself. <laughs> and Lori says, we're a well-trained owner of a cat. Mm -hmm. you're, you're there to please. Yeah. Yes, well, he's not very happy with me with trying to get his medicine. And Lorraine says uh, she's so excited we had a great-grandson born this week. Ooh, congratulations. Oh. Kaylee now informs me that Hey Boo was playing with the machine needle, actually. <laughs> she was trying to. And the to. pins were just a colorful distraction. She was trying to. She was trying to uh, touch the thing. Anne is watching. Claudia is watching. Oh, hi, Anne. Hi, Claudia. Well, there's a motorbike in the garage waiting for her for when she's 16. Well, actually, it's not there at the minute, but it will be. It's gone in for some repairs and a service. Okay, this says congratulations to Lorraine for her great-grandson.
Yeah, Diamond says, uh, um, I wandered off, so Alice was taking advantage. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, Pop Pop's usually the one who lets her get away with stuff. Not with the, not that. Not that, no. But... Uh, Sheila says she's learning so much watching your Friday night sessions. I've been oh. watching you make a quilt for so many years. I have a lot of tools and fabric and even books and patterns. <laughs> Just don't seem to have the confidence. Aw. Oh. I hope to pluck up the courage soon. Oh, definitely do it. Definitely do it. Because there's no there's no right or wrong way. Only the way that works for you. And it, you only got to please yourself. And Claudia says it looks like it's getting cold with you a cardi on. Yes. And uh, she's turned the heating on tonight, which the heating doesn't go in in our household until December. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't tell Michael, but I turned it on this morning. Monty was cold. Dorothy is watching. That is outrageous. <laughs> it's not even October The yet. boiler doesn't know how to work <laughs> until December. It was cold. I even forewent our morning bike ride because it was a bit windy and cold. Weak. I know. If it's nice, me and mum might go all the way around tomorrow. Yeah, you said. I think Monty wants out. He's not. He's scratching. Yeah. Morrow. <laughs> Morrow. Come on, Monty. Come on. There he goes. Right, I'm just doing regular um, stitching down binding at the moment. Nothing interesting until I get to the next slide. Jackie said last week you mentioned ideas for future shows. Oh, yes. Any chance of something Christmassy, please? Oh, yes. Actually, um, next week I've got some stocking panels in and some advent panels in. So I was going to do uh, one of the stocking panels, if that's interesting for everybody. Ann says her heating is on now. It's cold. And Diana says, my husband turned the heating on, but I've turned it off. <laughs> well done. And Lori says she's at her sewing machine with a fan on low. Oh. <laughs> Joanne says she loves that Monty has a voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. He definitely does. And Kaylee said on the note of future shows, will we have a spooky Halloween special? <gasps> Oh, yes. When does Halloween fall? 31st of October. Ugh, you don't say. I do say. What day is it? What day is it? Because we can do the, the Friday beforehand if it's not on it's, a Friday. It's the day after the 30th. People, please help me out. Anne says, are you going on Sewing Street? Um, I have talked to them. At the moment, so I'm back off furlough, so I'm back on my regular day job. Um, but it's not something I've ruled out and I have spoken to them. So yeah. Um, but I am going to definitely be with John, uh, on John's show in November, end of November. So I'll let you know when that is. How did that, how, I haven't seen, I haven't watched it on catch up yet. So how did it all go? Did you watch it this week? I heard there were some gremlins, but how was the show? Joanne says Halloween is on Saturday. Oh, oh, so we can do it the Friday before. Perfect. Yes, 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 yes. And Kaylee will be here for that, definitely. So she's already promised she's going to be home for Halloween. I, I like Halloween. Halloween is one of my holidays I like. Even though I'm not quite sure what's going to happen this year. No Halloween. It's been cancelled. No fun. No, no fun until six months. Well, usually, because... I always go mad for Halloween and the house is always decorated. There's always a pumpkin of some sorts. So all nope. the neighborhood kids know we have the good good sweets. Although for one year when Haby was here and all the kids kept knocking on the door, she was quite affronted. She was like, why, why are you talking to those other children? And she kept closing the door on them and pulling me away. Well said. 
Hey, boo. <laughs> Right then, so I am at the uh, point with the... Sorry, Laurie said John and Joe, or John and company, yeah. and the cook were great, well oh, worth okay. watching. Or maybe yeah. it is Joe, I don't know. No, it is Joe, oh, Joe okay. Carter was on. Yeah. Right, I'm doing my no my normal, you've seen it a million times before, call it turn. Fold and turn. <laughs> Kaylee says she can hear the old man noises of disapproval. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to explain that, ever since I've known Michael, and that's been a so he was he wasn't an old man when I met, met him. He was twenty seven, but when he would drive and he would get a bit stressed when he'd drive, he'd make old man noises or the sort of noises that my granddad used to make which is a bit of a ah, but a lot less noisy than that but ah, ah. and he swears he doesn't make old man noises but i have an old soul uh -huh. he doesn't even realize he's doing it either sandy says she's making tweed pumpkins and a crow oh cute 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 well, I do have an idea floating in my brain for a Halloween table runner, which I will try and work on next week. Because I do like Halloween. See this bit but I'm just sewing so I'm just making sure that my my sleeve top my raw edge and all my other raw edges are all lined up along the top and I'll show you the back see it's sewing over the the sleeve at the top to keep it well in oops sorry okay. no that was my fault And asks, where's the G&T? Oh, it's right here. Right here. Now, I told Michael I decided we've got this old sideboard from Nanny that has clutter on it at the moment. But I promised I'm going to clear all that and that's going to be a gin bar by Christmas. So I'm going to start ooh, move that out of the way. Start discovering some new gins, I think. Joanna says if I drink gin. I do not. Um... No. Michael is a um, cider or Guinness. Or, any stouts really? Stout, or randomly. So, we went to Madeira for my 40th and discovered a Portuguese beer that we both really like. So, it's super bock. So, we do have that's the one beer we do sometimes get. Oh, speaking of gin, you need to watch the new Ryan Reynolds aviation gin oh. advert. <laughs> home gin for homeschooling. <laughs> yes, thank goodness I didn't have to do that.
Diamond said her mother used to say that drinking gin was like sucking pennies. No idea what she meant. She doesn't drink at all now. <laughs> I don't know what that means either. I haven't heard that one. That's mint. Hello, Link. Hello, my boy. Diana said someone brought her, bought her daughter a bottle of Parma Violet Gin. Ooh. I can't, she can't stand the smell of it. Oh. I'll tell you what I have heard is nice. It's, it's not gin, but it's vodka. Somebody made um, pear drop vodka for their wedding. So it's literally, you just take a bottle of vodka and you pour lots of pear drops in it. And apparently you put it in the dishwasher, seal it up first, put it in the dishwasher so it heats up, and then you just leave it and let all the pear drops melt. That sounds like something that I might like. I might do some of that for Travis. Caroline says it's mother's ruin. Yes. <laughs> and Susan is watching. It is. Oh, hi Susan. <laughs> Diamond said her mother stopped drinking after a Southern Comfort promotional evening when she thought she was just drinking orange juice. <laughs> that sounds like my nanny, my my dad's mum, she never drank. And um, yeah, my mum and dad got her drunk on Southern Comfort one, one time. She didn't realise that she was drinking either. Barbara is watching. Oh, hi, Barbara. I've never actually had someone come to. Link. Uh, buddy, you know, come on. He's being a bit inappropriate. Okay, I'll just go to this end since I've started. Jackie says there's a bar a bar in Liege where you get a menu book for your beers. They sell over 900 oh. from around the world. Where is that? Uh, Liege in Belgium. We got, well, one day, if we're ever allowed out of the country and back in again. Bruges. Diana says they make Lakes Toffee Vodka up here in South Cumbria. Mm. That sounds nice. And Kaylee says, alternatively, place vodka in freezer with pear drops, shake every now and again. Oh. Southern Comfort is great with lemonade. <laughs> okay, we can stop that there. And I'll finish the bottom edge later. So I just want to show you what I've done. So now, what I will do, once I've got all my binding done, I'm ready to do it. Check this corner. Sandy says she likes toffee vodka. Mmm. That's another one to try out then. Yep, vodka is not gin though, is it? Um. Or is vodka and... Uh... Apparently you can make gin from vodka you just infuse it i have seen some recipes like that vodka is supposed to be one of those alcohols that doesn't have much taste 
so you can get drunk basically without really tasting it. Right. Yeah, that's why people like it. <laughs> Jackie says she's nodding in agreement with you and realize we're not in the same room. <laughs> I'm good. I'm not the only one that does that. I do that, especially when I'm watching John. I'm like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. I'm like, oh, he can't see me. He can't see me nodding. Kelly says gin is just fancy vodka. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, it's infused with botanicals. Juniper berries and botanicals. Kelly's all into her homemade potions and lotions potions so there we go so then I would if you've got those clips which I, I normally use when I'm binding you put those little easy clips and I just you just tack it down really you don't have to go all the way through you can just tack it down to the sleeve so long as it's tacked down so you just hand tack hand sew that down like you normally would and then what I do once I've done that and I'm ready to I lay my lay out flat so it doesn't rock up. So make sure it's perfectly flat. <laughs> Kitty says, "I say fancy. You can make it in a bathtub." <laughs> I thought that. I thought that's moonshine. <laughs> Katie's not a fan of gin, though. Right. So pin it down. And then I will hand sew the sleeve down, just like I did the binding, but you want to make sure that you just catch the backing and that you don't go through uh, the layers at all. So that's the only thing you need to be careful of when you're hand sewing that down. And another little trick, if you do put them into any exhibitions or send them off anywhere, a friend of mine said, as well as putting a label on the back of your name and address and everything that needs to be, sew one into the inside of your sleeve where you can't actually see it um, just in case if the worst should happen somebody should um, decide that they want to take the, the outside label off and claim that it's their quilt um, you've always got something for them to go to somebody to say you go ahead and have a look but I've never needed to do that <clears throat> thankfully Kaylee but. says, moonshine is made with a still with corn, which I did know. Yeah. So that's it. What time is it? Oh, five two. So early one, so yeah. So I'll show you the front again. That'll be my, hopefully getting it finished next week. So I'll finish up the um, sewing on the front and yeah, got chuffed with that. How's everybody doing? Here, those of you who bought patterns, how have you, how have you gotten on with them? Basically, it'd be also lovely to see if you got any pictures to progress pictures. Don't have to be finished. That's that. That's my um, wonky sewing machine, wrong side around. So yeah. So next week I will do um, the stockings. I'll show you the stockings and possibly if you're interested I can do an advent calendar um, I know they have instructions on them but I don't always follow what the instructions say to be honest um, I kind of do my own thing because sometimes it's easier uh, and yeah hopefully you enjoyed that hopefully you learned something a bit new um, have a great weekend stay dry stay warm and I'll see you next week. Bye. Night all.